this one here. Good afternoon. I call this uh, meeting of your state board of elections to order. It's 1 p.m. Call the roll, please. Chairman O'Bannon. Here. Vice Chair Dams. Here. Delegate Merricks. Here. Mr. Weinstein. Here. Mary Elvis Long here. Thank, thank you, Matthew, for attending. I hope you had safe travels. Glad to yep. have you back. Yep, traveled safely, um, but caught a cold while I was there. <laughs> All right. Uh, acknowledge Ms. Polio from the Attorney General's Office of the Council. Everybody knows the folks here at this table. Also, we want to acknowledge Mr. Nunley, who is the newly elected uh, chairman of the Virginia Electoral Board Association. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Approve the minutes. Approve the minutes. All right, Mr. Chairman. The minutes from the March 19th meeting have been distributed to the board for their review. I'm requesting that if there's no further additions or corrections to the minutes, that they be. All right. Any questions? No. All the roll, please. Chairman O'Bannon. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merritt. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Elvis Long, aye. Great. Uh, we'll now move on to public comment. The parameters that we'll hear from many folks physically in the room to start with, and then folks online. You're welcome to comment on anything on the agenda or anything else that you would like to speak to us about as well. We'll request a three minute uh, uh, time slot. Uh, anybody in the room have anything? online. I just wanted to ask if there had been any meetings of the Board of Elections uh, between February 29th and the uh, 4th of March and the 5th of March, the primary election. No meetings. No meetings. Thank you. Everybody on live, uh, I think we have Ms. Gregorian signed up. Ms. Gregorian? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I'd like to speak to agenda items number 10, 11, and 12 regarding the certification standards, phase five, um, for the equipment that is being certified. Uh, phase five of ELEX certification standards require uh, that with the vendor present, I'm quoting, with the vendor present, the electoral board members from the local jurisdiction along with elect will oversee the test use of the system in a mock election. However, in both the letters from Chesterfield uh, dated March 22nd uh, with two systems tested and January 26th with one test uh, system tested from Arlington, there were no electoral board members mentioned on either of these letters from the localities signed by the general registrars. Um, and there is no mention as well of a vendor being uh, there for the testing. So I would request that the board um, uh, not approve this today until that can be uh, resolved uh, as to why the electoral boards uh, were not at the mock testing as required um, by phase five of ELEX certification standards. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Any other public comment from folks virtual? All right. Move on to the next item, which is our commissioner's report. Chairman O'Bannon, members of the board. Since we last met, the Virginia Electoral Board Association had their general meeting, as you mentioned. I, along with confidential policy advisor Rachel Lawless and CTO Brendan Smith, presented at the meeting. I would like to congratulate John Nunley of Caroline County, who was elected president of VIVA. And I'd also like to extend a heartfelt thank you to Joanne Speeden of Orange County for her leadership as president of the organization over the past few years. Uh, currently, elect is conducting a voter placement audit across the Commonwealth to ensure that voters are registered in their correct precinct prior to the primary and general elections. Any corrections that are needed are flagged and individual meetings are set up with general registrars to ensure accurate voter registration and that every voter is in the correct precinct. 
This is an annual check that we have implemented that was a recommendation of the 2018 JLOC report recommendations. And I'd like to thank Sarah Daly, Dale Arnold, William Creasy, Sydney Vaughn, and Zach Bitter for their leadership on this issue. Um, on today's agenda, we have seven races in which candidates filed simultaneously, which we will need to draw names for, uh, for ballot order. So we're going to have a lot of um, time spent with the Crystal Bowl and the film canisters today. And um, we also are going to be presenting three certifications for your approval, two poll books and one voting machine. Um, the voting machine has passed federal and state certification standards in its review. As you know, there are not currently federal certification standards for poll books, but Virginia does have its own set of certification standards. Um, in fact, several states have implemented our standards as a best practice um, since it's not something that's at the federal level. So that will be coming before you on the agenda as well. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Next item. <clears throat> <laughs> Good afternoon, Chairman, State Board members, Commissioner Council. First agenda item, as the Commissioner referenced, is specifically code driven 24.2529, in which primary candidates that file with their political party chairman or chairwoman simultaneously um, come into conflict with the code's language about primary and ballot order. Obviously, time so there's code provision to give order to simultaneous filing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to run through seven offices, as the commissioner mentioned: United States Senate on the Republican side, the Democratic side for Congressional Two, Democratic and Republican for U.S. House of Representatives Seven and Ten, and then Democratic Eleven. So. The crystal ball or bowl predates my 24 years in Virginia elections, <laughs> as do the film canisters. But it is a very effective method in that the bowl can be seen through, the canisters cannot. And I have slips in my folder. You comfortable there? Would you rather? No, sir. I'm very comfortable here. I appreciate that. So, within your packets, we'll go through these offices in the order specified. If you look at your S Elect 527 forms, you'll see the actual form that brings us to these points. So, the very first office is Republican Party primary election for United States Senate, in which Hung Cow and Edward C. Eddie Garcia Jr. Both filed with Chairman Anderson on the very first day of filing. So what I'm going to do, I have the two names on two slips of paper. So one at a time, just make some folds. Fold. Fold. The canister into the bowl. Canisters. Okay, so we agitate the canisters. So the first film canister drawn will have a name on it that will designate first, first ballot petition. Chairman O'Bannon, would you care to draw or designate someone to draw? All right. Yeah, that right. Cow, first ballot position. Kelly Barrett, would you pull this other canister and just your best name that present? Yeah. Oh. see Eddie Garcia. Be second on the ballot. Sure. <clears throat> oh, <my. clears throat> 
On to the next. All right, next office is the Democratic primary for House of uh, Representatives 2nd Congressional District. As you see from the party chairs form, Missy Smazel and Jeremiah Denton IV both filed with the chairman at noon on March the 18th. Again, two slips of paper with both names. Do the folds, do the canisters, and we'll have valid positions on. <clears throat> United States House of Representatives, Second Congressional District, Jeremiah A. Jake Denton. Second name drawn for the Democratic primary in uh, U.S. House 2, Missy Cotter Smith. All right, so this begins two consecutive similar offices, just different political parties. We're going to start with the Republican primary in the U.S. House of Representatives 7th Congressional District. Again, if you look on your form, elect 527. You will see there uh, John Myers, Derek Anderson, Cameron, Cameron Hamilton, all five with the chairman at noon on the 18th of March. Party primary election, United States House of Representatives, 7th Congressional District, Derek M. Anderson. Okay. 
of the morning primary election, the United States House of Representatives, 7th Congressional District, Cameron B. Hamilton. All right, on to the next one. This is the Democratic U.S. House of Representatives, 7th Congressional District. Again, if you look on your 527 form, you will see seven names, excuse me, six names, I'm sorry, six names that have filed simultaneously with their uh, congressional district chair. So we have Carl Fidel, Elizabeth Guzman, Clifford or Cliff Heinzer, Margaret Franklin, Brianna Sewell, and Eugene Binfen. Carl B. Bell, Guzman, Let me do these one at a time. Yes, sir. First name drawn, Eugene Benton. Red White Primary Election at the Congress of Southern Church, Indiana, D.C. Democratic Party primary election, United States House of Representatives, 7th Congressional District, Elizabeth R. Guzman. I said that right. Be the fourth name drawn in the Democratic Party primary seven. Just 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 have to represent Carl B. Dale. Okay. 
Fifth name, Cliff D. Heinzer. Party primary election. I said, How to represent the South Congressional District, <coughs> Margaret Angela Frank. All right, we're on to our second consecutive, well, next office, which has a, both a Democrat and Republican simultaneous filing. This is United States House of Representative 10th Congressional District. We're going Republican first. As you look at your fi elect 527 forms, you'll see that Alicia Andrews, Mike Clancy, Alex Isaacs Jr. all filed with their chair at noon on Mar uh, March the 18th. Slips with Lisa Andrews, Clancy, Alex Isaacs Jr. That's right. Party primary election, United States House of Representatives, 10th Congressional District, Mike W. Clancy. Republican Party primary election, United States House of Representatives, 10th Congressional District. Alex H. or yeah, Alex H. Isaac Jr. Republican primary, tenth congressional district, Alicia Andrews. All right. This will be the Democratic U.S. House of Representatives 10th Congressional District. And this is seven names filing simultaneously with their party chair. This is Marion DeVoe Sr., Eileen Fillercorn, Jennifer Boisco, Atif Car Carney, excuse me, sorry for that. Suha Subramanian, Daniel I. Helmer, and Chris Kirsty Vida Hall. Senior Eileen Fillercorn, Jennifer Boisco, Satiki Carmi, Suha Subramanian. Dan Helmer, Crystal, excuse me, Crystal Fida Call.
Apologies. Are they able to repeat the first one of that seven? It cut out on my end. First or seven? Crystal Vita Call. It's the seventh. Oh, sorry. I meant the first one mentioned uh, of that seven. Marion DeVoe Sr. Thank you. I'm going to do these one at a time. First name drawn for 10th district is Colleen Pillarcorn. Democratic Party primary election, United States House of Representatives, 10th Congressional District. Suha, Suha, Daniel. Okay. Okay. Weinstein, I hope you realize what you're missing. <laughs> I'm listening to it. I'm I'm there in spirit at least. Democratic Party primary election, United States House of Representatives, 10th Congressional District, Atif M. Carney. United States House of Representatives, 10th Congressional District, primary election, Dan Helmer. This is the fifth name for the uh, Democratic primary for Congressional 10, Marion DeVoe Sr. Right by primary election, United States House of Representatives, 10th Congressional District, Crystal Vita Call. The Democrat Party primary election, United States House of Representatives, 10th Congressional District, Jennifer B. Boisco. All right, last but not least. Democratic U.S. House of Representative 11th District. And if you look on your elect 527 form, you'll see the names Jerry, excuse me, Gerald E. Jerry Connolly and Hassan Nasser, both filed with their chair on the 18th of March at 1204.
Democratic Party primary election, United States House of Representatives, 11th Congressional District, Hassan M. Nassau. Democratic Party primary election, United States House of Representatives, 11th Congressional District, Gerald E. Jerry Connolly. Chairman O'Bannon, thank you so much. I believe there is just the suggested motion to finish out the business that the order as selected by a random draw is set for the primary for these simultaneous filers. Entertain that motion. Chairman, I move that the board certify the determination by law for the board of candidates on the ballot for primary election to be held on June 18, 20. Second. Second. All will Vice Chair Vance, aye. Delegate Maris, Mr. Weinstein, aye. Terry Alvis Long, aye. Uh, thank you, Mr. Abel and Mr. Lewis, for your expertise. Thank everybody else for their patience. <laughs> All right, next item agenda is split precincts. Welcome. Good afternoon, Chairman Ben, members of the State Board of Elections. I'm here today with another split precinct waiver. Uh, as you well know, pursuant to 2012.2-307 of the Code of Virginia, authorizes the State Board of Elections to grant a waiver to administer a select precinct if the governing body of the locality is unable to establish a precinct with a minimum number of registered voters without splitting the precinct. Pursuant to the same statute, the minimum number of registered voters for a county precinct is 100, and the minimum for a city precinct is 500. Today, I'm presenting uh, Prince William County Split Precinct Waivers. Uh, they are uh, applying for uh, Precinct 208 in Fullerton, which affects 58 voters, and Precinct 604, their Garfield District, which affects 27 voters. Both of these were previously uh, applied for back in 2022, as well as 2023. Both were approved both in those years. As, uh, the number of affected voters for both of these districts is still under the 100 uh, registered voter threshold. We once again recommend approving the Prince William County Split Precinct Waiver. Thank you. Any comment from the public? Anybody from Prince William? Anyone have any questions? Your motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the State Board of Elections approve Split Precinct Waiver for Prince William. Chairman yes, O'Bannon. Right. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merricks. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Elvis Long. Aye. Thank you. All right. Uh, item seven, voter registration application. Welcome back. <laughs> Chairman O'Bannon. Thank you, members of State Board Commissioner and Council. Third, this agenda item is to put into place passage of House Bill 943, or now that has been signed by the governor, the Acts of Assembly, Chapter 309, which adds one more classification to those that are protected through the Virginia voter registration process. Uh, this incorporates current electoral board members, general registrars, deputy registrars, employees of the office of the general registrar, and officers of election. They feel their situation uh, warrants, then they will allow be allowed to check this in section four. You should hopefully have in your packets the proposed change to Virginia's voter registration application. The specific placement now is one more box in item four. This is a traditional spot where protected voters, Leos, uh, those with protective orders are allowed to specify that they need their address, their residence address, protected from uh, data sales by code. So it just adds one more box to this page, section four specifically. Uh, again, the law has gone 
has been passed, there is a part of this memo that indicates we're bringing this to you now because obviously this is the Michigan voter registration application. This will go into effect July 1, so there's a lot of lead time to get this ready for mass distribution on the means after July 1st, especially in the presidential registration. It's going to be an issue, so it's not an issue. So the, 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 these were these were companion bills, I think, that passed House and Senate. Yeah, I I would ask a policy if I'm if I'm stating it incorrectly, but I think this had pretty unanimous support. Uh, it's been signed by the governor. It goes yeah. into effect July, and we have an obligation to get forms up to date to so properly printed. Yes. yes. Any members have any questions? I do. Yes, ma'am. The current ones, then, as of July 1st, would not be able to be used. You have to use this one after July 1st. You should use this one after July 1st. I think we have a standing policy with the state board that old forms are permissible. But obviously, if you use the old form and weren't in this classification, you'd be a little bit out of luck unless you wrote it in underneath that I was this class is into. But yes, I mean, I'm sure. We, the, and no one would be able to scour the Commonwealth to get out these old forms. So the goal of any voter registration form is to get someone registered. Right. And this is a small niche group of people that this impacts. So I would not make it a category that makes the registration application unable to be processed. All right. Your motion. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> I move that the state board of elections approve the amended union voter registration application pursuant to Act Assembly Chapter 309 to be effective July 1, 2020. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Chair Cabana. Aye. Mr. Dance. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Ellis Law. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Today we only have chairman, vice chair, secretary. Um, we have before you just one stand by your ad alleged violation, and that is for Williamsburg, James City, Republican County. You have it in your folders as well. The issue before you today, they put out a sample ballot, which follows under flyers, but the uh, 24.2-622 of the code says unofficial sample ballots must be marked as such and have the proper disclosure and they fall under standby or ad. The problem with this one is the authorization form. Says um, the authorization is just a sticker placed over top of the. Get it up there, Yolanda. <laughs> okay. We can all see it. That one you don't want to get. That's the one. Keep going. Let's go straight to the. There we go. All right. Oh, go back. All right, you see, all they've done is taken a white sticker and stuck it over the official sample ballot. And that's the problem with this. This one was actually filed by the GR. The GR states that the committee was coming into our office, taking them off her counter, going out to their tent, filling them in, sticking the sticker on, and handing them out. So the main problem with it is the fact that, you look at the next slide, please, Yolanda. Next one. <laughs> they left official sample ballots, so it looks like the Williamsburg or James City County locality or their electoral board is supporting these candidates. So that's the violation we have here. And right. Mr. Chris Woodfin is representing them, so she'd like to speak. All right, Mr. Woodfin, welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, I just wanted to speak for a couple of moments and ask for uh, really consideration from the board, just in the, the understanding that 
these guys are all volunteers. This wasn't even a candidate. Uh, it's a political party, a bunch of volunteers, and what uh, Ms. Alexander stated is correct. They were outside at the early voting or, or absentee in person tent, um, handing out, you know, supporting the Republican candidates. They realized that people were, some people were asking for absentee for sample ballots. They didn't have any. So they went inside and got the sample ballots that were being handed out by the, uh, by the, the registrar's office, the, the, you know, just handed out. Um, I actually personally give, uh, uh, give credit to one of the volunteers that was uh, one of the vice chairs to actually have the wherewithal to know to put some sort of sticker on there at all. Uh, because most volunteers would have just taken the thing, filled them out, and started handing them out without paying any attention to that there was a disclosure on it. Uh, as soon as they, you know, I, I live there, this is my, my jurisdiction, um, and some of them contacted me by text message that day, and I told them, I said, no, you need to, you know, not use those. You need to basically print your own. And they rectified the situation uh, within the next day or so as far as stopping handing those out and passing out their own uh, own and so forth. So, I mean, with the, uh, the remediation that was done and also just with the simple understanding that these were volunteers, it wasn't the party leadership that made a decision that, hey, we're going to go take the sample ballots from the registrar's office and hand those out. Uh, no, it was just volunteers trying to fix what they perceived as a problem at the tent. Uh, we'd ask for some consideration on the board, uh, potentially. I mean, obviously, we'd love, uh, we'd love the board to just forgive it, but if not, to try the, uh, I think the board's allowed a $50 uh, fine versus the $100 fine for uh, party committees. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Yes, sir. Actually, my recommended motion is a one hundred dollar penalty because it does involve statewide candidates or state candidates. So these not individual candidates at the local level, like no. we had. This was all the way across the board, local all the way up to the state level. Any questions? Is there a motion? I'm Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. I had one hundred dollar penalty. Second. Right. Second. Roll oh, roll. Governor Bannon. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merritt. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Alma Small. Aye. Thank you. We do have a thing we deferred from last time with the staff recommendation that that be dismissed. Uh, that is on the next memo for the next. Next. Okay. okay. Go ahead. All right. So thank you for that. Still on. Yeah, I'm still up here. <laughs> so you'll have a memo before you. This is finalizing all of the decisions made on the 18. And did you make your decisions on last month? They were all $25. And we recommend dismissing against friends of Matt Strickland due to testimony given at the last meeting. Okay. Any questions? Your no. motion? Oh, Mr. Chair, I move that the board finalize the decisions made on the 18. Stand by your ad. Violations assessed at the March 19, 2024 State Board of Elections meeting and to dismiss the remaining matter. Oh, I'm sorry. I would like to be second. All right, call the roll now. Chairman <laughs> Urbana. Aye. Thanks, Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merricks. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Elvis Long. Aye. Thank you so much. Thank That's all I have. Thank you. 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 you. One is for clear ballot, clear vote 2.4 is a voting system. And the other two are electronic poll books, no ink, poll pad 3.4.0, and ESNS, election services and software, express poll 7.2.6.0. For the clear ballot, clear vote voting system, per applicable code section 24.2, chapter 6.3. 629 requirements and procedures. You will see in your packet the clear ballot, clear vote 2.4, 
voting system certification from SLI, our VISTA voting system technology lab. You will also see a correspondence from a mock election up under the director of elections for Arlington, Gretchen Renmeyer, and of course, our Virginia State Certification of Voting System Standards. To give you a background, following the steps prescribed in the Virginia State Certifications of Voting Systems, requirements and procedures, Clear Ballot initiated the certification evaluation to the Department of Elections on December 7th, 2023. Clear Ballot provided their technical data package to TDP and corporate information required under step two of requirements and procedures. Both of these submissions were deemed complete and in sufficient detail to warrant step number three, the preliminary review. During the preliminary review, the state design designated evaluation agent conducted a preliminary analysis of the TP and other materials provided and prepared test assertions. Clear product provided the certification fee and the testing evaluation was conducted on January 22nd through January 25th, 2024, here at the elect facilities in Virginia. In addition, the system was successfully tested in a mock election in Arlington County on January 26th, 2024. Clear ballot voting system presented for certification of the Clear Vote 2.4 successfully completed the Virginia voting system certification standards. And we have a suggested motion for you to make that. If there are any questions. Questions? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board certify the use of clear ballot voting system. Clear vote 2.4 in election in the Commonwealth of Virginia pursuant to the state certification voting system requirement. Second. 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 You have two more? One and let's vote on this one. <laughs> Call roll. Chairman Urbana. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merricks. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Aldous Long, I. All right. Apologize. Man. You have two more. Um, both of those are electronic poll books. And I'd like to mention to you, like the commissioner said, they are up under a different code in our section, um, code 24.2, package 6 611. Um, up under the requirements and procedures for knowing poll pad 3.4.8. Um, you should see in your packet the system certification letter provided by SLI. Um, you should also see a correspondence of a mock election held in Chesterfield County up under Missy Vera. And of course, the Virginia State Certification of Electronic Poll Books Requirements and Procedures. For the background of this, is similar to what we do for our voting systems. Um, no week submitted up under requirements for procedures, certification, evaluation of the Department of Elections on January 8th, 2024. Knowing also provided their technical data package and corporate information as required per step two of the requirements and procedures. Both of these submissions were deemed complete and in sufficient detail to warrant a court step number three, the preliminary review. During the preliminary review, the state designated evaluation agent conducted a preliminary analysis of the DEP and other materials provided and provided test assertions to them. Knowing provided the certification fee and testing evaluation was conducted on March 11th through March 13th, 2024 at the elect facilities in Virginia. In addition, the system was successfully tested in a mock election in Chesterfield County on March 14th, 2024. The knowing poll pad and then trying poll book presented for certification under version 3.4.8 successfully completed Virginia electronic poll book state certifications requirements. And of course, there's a suggested motion for you. Yeah. I move that the board certify the use of the known electronic poll book system, poll book, poll pad 3.4.8, the elections in the Commonwealth of Virginia, pursuant to the state certification of electronic poll book requirements. There's a second. Second. All right. Second. Second. All right. Any questions? Call the roll. Chairman O'Bannon. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merricks? Aye. Mr. Weinstein? Aye. Secretary Alvis Long? Aye. We have one last certification that is for ES and S electronic systems and software for their electronic poll book express poll 7.2.6.0. You will see in your packet 
um, the ESNS Express Post 7.2.6.0 system certification letter provided by SLI. We have a mock election correspondence from Chesterfield County and, of course, the standards for electronic poll books. This, of course, is still applicable for, for Code 24.2, Chapter 6 611. Following the steps prescribed in the Virginia State Certifications of Electronic Poll Books, Requirements and Procedures, ESNS initiated the election evaluation to the Department of Elections on February 26. The SNS provided the technical data package to EP and corporate information requirement in step two. And all of this was warranted and deemed. So we went to step three, the preliminary review. During the preliminary review, the state designated evaluation agent conducted a preliminary analysis of the TDP and other materials, provided and prepared test assertions. The SNS provided the certification <clears throat> and test evaluations were conducted on March 18th through March 20th, 2024, here at the elect facilities in Virginia. In addition, of course, the system was successfully tested in the mock election in Chesterfield County on May 21st, 2024. The ESNS Express Poll, electronic poll book, presented to you for certification under version 7.2.6.0, successfully completed Virginia electronic poll book state certification requirements. And if there are any questions, there's a suggested motion. Mr. Chairman. I move that the board certify the use of electronic systems and software, electronic poll book system, express poll 7.2610 in elections in the Commonwealth of Virginia, pursuant to the state certification of electronic poll books requirements and procedures. Second. Second. All right. All vote. Chairman Bannon. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merricks. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Okay. Carry all this along. Aye. Thank you, board. That's all. I think that completes the agenda that was presented, except for a closed section. Anything anybody wants to call, entertain a motion to go into closed session? Mr. Chairman, I move in pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A7. I move that the board go into closed session for the purpose of discussing pending threatening litigation. In accordance with Section 2.2-3712F, Susan Bills, Commissioner of Elections. And Dennis Poli of the Office of the Attorney General will attend the closed session because their presence will read with aid the board in its consideration of the subject meeting. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, all the Chairman Bannon. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merricks. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Elvis Long. Aye. Thank you all very much. I uh, appreciate your attending today. We have, what's our next meeting, May? <laughs> We've got our private. We're good. All right. Uh, uh, Duncan Parrots. Turn I move to reconvene the meeting in open session and take a roll call vote certifying that the best of each one of the members knowledge only such public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under this chapter and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard or discussed by the state board of election. All right. Is there a second? I second. Call the roll. Chairman O'Bannon. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merricks. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Elvis Long. Aye. All right. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I, I move that we rescind the um, actions taken on items 10, 11, and 12 of the agenda today and refer them uh, for actions on the May 28th meeting. All right. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right. Discussion. Call the roll. Chairman O'Bannon. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merricks. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Elvis Long. Aye. Okay. Anything else? All right. well, thank you all very much. It's going to be an exciting few months. Yeah. So I appreciate everybody's hard work. Appreciate Mr. Nunley being here. All right. It's a motion to adjourn. I salute, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We still got to sign those. Yeah. Why don't you bring them back? Not sure. Call the roll. Chairman O'Bannon. Aye. Vice Chair Dance. Aye. Delegate Merricks. Aye. Mr. Weinstein. Aye. Secretary Elvis Long. Aye. All right. We got to wait for the This is the document.